Welcome to this tutorial about Milestones Professional. Today we're going to be talking about importing from Microsoft Project into Milestones Professional. To get started with importing from Project, let's go to the Connections tab inside Milestones Professional. On the Connections tab, we have a few pretty commonly used buttons here in the Microsoft Project section. The first button is Create Report from Project. This is the one you press to import an MPP file into Milestones Professional. The second button is Create Report from Project Server. Same idea, but you use this if you use Project Server. The third button is the Refresh button. You use this button to automatically update your milestone schedule whenever the dates inside Project change. For now, let's click on Create Report from Project. Once you click it, you'll see a dialog box pop up allowing you to find your MPP file. So find your MPP file and then click Open. Now you'll see the Project to Milestones Wizard dialog box. On the top of this dialog box, you have a few options for telling Milestones to limit which tasks it imports from the project file that you chose. First, you can limit your import to upper-level tasks only if you'd like to. For instance, if I just wanted to bring in Outline Level 1 tasks, I would choose 1 in this drop-down. Since I want to bring in everything, I will choose 20. Next is the Flag Field drop-down. This is the most common way that users tell Milestones which tasks to import. To use a Flag Field, you would add a flag field to project and then set tasks to yes if you would like to import that task. For instance, let's go to the project file and you'll see that flag 1 has been added and some of the tasks are set to yes. This means that Milestones would only bring in those tasks on the import if I choose flag 1 in that dropdown. The third dropdown box is for picking which field to use to link your Milestones task to project. By default, we have Unique ID set. Only change this if you have another valid unique identifying field in your project file, as you will need to use this field to refresh your tasks later. The final box is the Nickname field. You only need to use this field if you are going to link multiple MS project files to the same Milestones file. Now let's talk about the different methods of importing that we have available. First, we have Use a Built-in Template. I will be covering this method today. There are many templates to choose from which will automatically import and display your tasks from projects in Milestones. After you import, you can make changes to the file and save it as a custom import template. Then you would choose the Start with a Custom Template option. There is also a wizard available that goes step by step through a lot of different options, but I won't be covering that today. The Create Swim Lane Schedules Using Codes option is another way to import your information from project, this time using text or number fields to code your schedule and import it into milestones in different ways. To get started, let's choose Use a Built-in Template, and then press Next. So now we need to choose a category and a type. So we've got a lot of categories to choose from, including Gantt, Stoplight, Milestone, Summary, and each of these has a different schedule type, or several. So you can see there's a lot of different summary uh, schedules here. And if you go to Milestone, you'll see there's a lot of different uh, Milestone schedules. Um, this image right here isn't using your actual project information, it's just an example. Um, to keep it simple, let's go to Gantt, and we'll just use that basic Gantt um, type right there. Keep in mind that there is help available for all of these different types if you want some more information about what each type does. If you press about this format, it's going to open up a help page and you can see each of these different types of schedules is going to have its own uh, help page available. So at this point we could either press finish and it will choose the default options for this template or we can press Next and we can define some of those options ahead of time. So let's click Next. For this particular template, you have a lot of different options. You have summary bars. So you're either telling uh, Milestones to bring in the 
summary bars from projects, or you're saying you want milestones to draw the summary bars automatically. So for this option, I'll choose to bring in the project summary bars. You have some additional options, uh, like color critical tasks red or show dependencies, and you can kind of see you know, how those options affect the schedule. If you look down here in the preview, uh, for most of them, like show dependencies, those are just vertical links. Uh, color critical tasks red, you can kind of see that. And so each different template is going to have some different options, uh, just to kind of uh, give you some you know, different ways to import. So I would definitely recommend just you know, trying an option, and if that doesn't work, um, just go through the import process again and see what changes. So let's go ahead and press next. Um, you can do a title, so I'll just call this uh, Death Star title. That's what the MPP file is that I'm using. Um, you can do up to three different lines of title. Um, I'll just do the first line right there. I'll press next. Now this is where we can set our symbol text. So for this particular import option, we're going to be bringing in Gantt bars. So the Gantt bar is going to have a start symbol and a finish symbol. So each of those symbols can have um, symbol text. So if you look right here, it'll say start name. So let's set that to none. So this is the three symbol text lines for the start symbol. So right now I set that to none, so it looks like there's no text coming in on the start symbol. And the finish symbol, the first line of symbol text is going to be the name field. Um, so that sounds pretty good. That's just your name field from project. And if you had any other field you wanted to use, um, like a text field or number field, um, you could set that there. So right now we're bringing in the name field on the finish symbols for this particular template. Uh, same kind of thing with the notes over here. I don't want to bring in any, any notes, so I'll just leave those as none. And then I can press next. Um, I have some layout options here. I could change the layout if I know that I want to bring it in on a certain uh, size paper. Um, again, you can change this after you do the import process. Uh, these are all kind of layout and formatting options that you have in Milestones. Um, this is just kind of setting it up ahead of time uh, how you'd like to see it. So you could you know, show the legend or hide the legend or you know, change the rows per page. Um, so at this point, I'll just press Next. And then you've got the color theme. You can change that if you want to. So for instance, I could just change this to maybe Autumn, and you can see um, how that comes in. You know, each color theme also has outline shading, so if I set outline shading, um, then you can see it actually brings it in according to um, the outline level from project. So I'll go ahead and press finish. And you can see it brought in that schedule. It says import complete. And I can kind of zoom in here and see that it did actually bring in all of those um, tasks from my project file. Um, you know, I can go back to my project file and kind of compare those. So for instance, you had phase one right here um, going from January of 2020 to um, September of 2022. Go back to milestones, you see that um, that's pretty much what that is. <clears throat> Got this developed structural plans again in the project file. Um, it's the same dates, so it's bringing in uh, the correct tasks from project, and it's also linking these tasks back to project. So if I do click on one of these symbols, um, the way linking works inside Milestones is you can click on a symbol and go to the symbol links tab right here in the selection tab. Um, you could also double click on the symbol, um, get to the same options. So symbol links, you'll see right here it has an automation tag and it probably doesn't make sense unless you're very familiar with uh, milestones. But if you click on this little button right under the automation tag box, it's create slash edit tag for refresh. Um, you'll kind of see how those 
are um, set up. So this tag has a 5, and so that's saying that the unique ID is 5. It's a finish date, so you can see that the symbol we have selected is actually that finish symbol for develop structural plans. And then the symbol text line 1 is set as name, and all of these are set to none, so that's just blanks um, with just empty commas pretty much. So I'll press OK, and you can see if we go back, so this is like 5 start for develop structural plans. You can go back to your project file and see that, you know, that's unique ID 5, and that start date is 1 slash 13 slash 2020. So you can go back to milestones and see if you click on that symbol, it's got the date of 1 slash 13 slash 2020, and that's a start symbol. So that's kind of how linking works inside Milestones Professional. Each symbol is linked using unique ID, what type of symbol it is, and any other information um, that you have on it. So let's pretend that for whatever reason, some of our dates inside project change. So if I go to project, um, I can just go ahead and uh, just kind of modify some of these dates for these tasks. Uh, so for instance, I'll push out this task a few months, I'll push out this task a few months, and I'll just mess with these, um, these tasks in this first um, phase just to keep it kind of simple. So I moved all of those tasks out um, a couple months, uh, except for the first task, I didn't touch that. So let's go ahead and go back to Milestones. And now we've got a project file whose dates have changed. So we need to update our milestone schedule to show those new dates. Uh, as you can see right now, we've got, you know, these um, tasks are still in the old position, uh, but we've got new dates. So let's see if those can get updated. So to update dates, we would go to the Connections tab, and we'd click on Refresh Previously Imported Project. And we're going to choose Refresh from MPP slash MPD file. Um, obviously, if we were refreshing from Project Server, we'd probably choose that option. So let's go ahead and say Refresh from MPP file. and it makes you save your schedule really quick. So now you can pick your MPP file. So I've got that same MPP file that's already open in project, and I will say open. And now you get the refresh options dialog box. So there's a lot of options here, and some of them can kind of mess up your schedule if you're not careful. Uh, the first one is refresh symbol text. So the symbol text is that text that's on the various symbols. Um, if your symbol text has changed inside your project file, you might want to uh, check this refresh symbol text checkbox. Um, if your symbol text has not changed, you should probably just uncheck that um, because when it does bring in that new text, it's going to place it at the default position um, for each symbol. So if you've moved any of your symbol text around, it might uh, move that back to where it used to be. So refresh symbol notes, uh, same thing. Uh, we don't have any symbol notes, so we don't really need to check this. Um, something interesting, though, with symbol text and symbol notes is if you want to totally redo how your symbol text or notes is set up, um, you can choose a second option. So. The first option is just going to bring in the text to wherever it was set on the original import. Uh, the second option, you can actually change what text comes in. So if you accidentally brought in the name field and you really want to bring in you know, the text field or something, uh, you could just set that there. Um, so that's a pretty nice option. And the same option is available for symbol notes. Uh, I'm going to uncheck that for now. Um, I don't need to bring in any percent complete. Uh, this is all kind of in the future, um, so I'm not really messing with percent complete right now. But if you were refreshing percent complete, um, you would choose that refresh percent complete and then choose 
um, you know, whichever percent complete column you're using, or if you're using a number column, uh, you could choose that right there. Um, there's a few options, additional options down here, so let's kind of go through those. So you've got refresh tagged columns. Um, that's going to refresh any columns um, in your schedule, in your milestone schedule that's linked to a uh, project column. So if you brought in, like for instance, this name field from project, um, if you check refresh tagged columns, it's actually going to look at you know all of those different um, fields that are also in milestones, and it's going to update those automatically. Um, I don't need to bring in any columns, so I'll just leave that unchecked. Uh, update dependent symbols. This is only for symbols that are in milestones but not linked to a uh, project task. Um, if you have a dependency in project, um, you know, milestones will update those dates automatically um, if they've changed in project. So it's only going to look at the project dates. Um, it's not really going to take dependencies into account. Um, it's just going to bring in those new dates from project. Uh, you probably want to have ignore times uh, checked on unless you're doing a really short range schedule like uh, just a few weeks or something. Highlight change dates. Um, this is a good option to just kind of visually see what changed in your milestone schedule um, after the refresh goes through. Uh, we don't really need to reset the date range but if we moved our project file out a few years uh, you might want to choose reset date range. Append new tasks from project. Um, this is kind of a risky checkbox because if you originally had used a flag field or something and you check this, it's going to bring in everything from project. Um, it's not going to remember that flag field that you used. So definitely only choose this if you have just added a single task and you had already imported your entire schedule before. Uh, report obsolete milestones and report missing project tasks. Uh, these will show up in the uh, refresh report after we press refresh. Uh, the obsolete milestones will be any milestones in uh, your milestones professional schedule that are not uh, linked to a valid unique ID in project so that you know uh, unique ID is missing. And then report missing project tasks. Uh, that's going to report anything in project that is not in your milestone schedule. So at this point I can just press refresh. And it goes through a process and then it gives you this refresh report. So if you look at the refresh report, it'll actually tell you, um, you know, which MPP file it's using. It's going to tell you which uh, milestones professional file you're updating and then it's going to go through each uh, symbol that got changed so uh, for instance this unique ID number nine which is design internal layout um, it'll tell you that old date which is 524 and then the new date which is 930 uh, you remember we moved that task out we also moved a few more tasks out and it'll go through you know the different unique ID and what the name field was um, for all of those so we moved uh, just a few start and finish dates and then at the end it'll say refresh complete uh, nine dates changed and you can just press OK um, you can also just select it and copy it to a file or you could print it out if you want to um, I'll just press OK and then going back to milestones um, you can see these milestones got changed um, the refresh highlighting is on so that's what that uh, highlight change dates option was. So if you go to the connections tab and you look at refresh highlighting, uh, you'll see that it's checked. So if you uncheck it, uh, it's going to hide that orange box. So that's what refresh highlighting is. And again, that's in the connections tab, um, this little checkbox right over here. Thanks for watching this video about importing from Microsoft Project into Milestones Professional and then refreshing. Visit our website at kidasa.com or email us at support at kidasa.com with any questions. Have a nice day.